Hello, I'm Atuba George, and welcome to the month of August. Praise God. Listen, the month of August, this is the word of the Lord that came to me concerning August. He says, go wrestle and win. Praise God. Yeah, he says, that, that's what I heard the Lord say. He says, wrestle and win. Now, I explained that during the, the, the fasting and prayer we had on the first. Now, as the Lord will help us, maybe I'll try to give a brief explanation concerning that because we're still studying the book of First Corinthians. Now listen, why is the Lord say wrestle and win? Remember, it says we wrestle not against flesh and blood. So there's a wrestling going on. Now that wrestling is not physical fight or punch or thing. That's why it says we don't wrestle with flesh and blood. But you see, we are insisting that the kingdom of heaven be fulfilled on earth. Jesus said we should pray, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Actually, it means Jesus said as it is written in heaven, let it be done on earth earth and the lord is giving us a command now he says go wrestle and win see it tells me something now god will not tell you to go to any battle if he has not already given you the victory so actually he's telling us to show face in the battle and that means this month listen everything everything that belongs to the kingdom of God. You see, you will see the kingdom of God begin to rise in a significant manner. People will begin to turn back to the Lord. Why? Because it will be obvious or it will begin to be obvious to people. It's already obvious to us. Hallelujah. That Jesus reigns in the earth. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Fear not. Only believe in Jesus, and you will see the victory. Praise God. Let's pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, thank you for bringing us into this glorious month of August. Lord, we bless you because we receive your word to us that we should go and win. Therefore, Lord, we bring into subjection everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of Jesus Christ. They are coming down in our lives. Thank you, Holy Spirit, because even now, you will not hold back anything that shall be profitable to us, but freely we receive the grace of the Lord that brings knowledge and understanding. And there we walk in it and produce results in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Turn your Bibles with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 9. We are in chapter 9. On Friday, we finished chapter 8. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, Paul began to talk here. And then he, from, from verse 1, he said, Am I not an apostle? Am I not free? Have I not seen Jesus Christ our Lord? Are not ye my walk in the Lord? See, if I be not an apostle unto others, yet doubtless I am to you, for the seal of mine apostleship are ye in the Lord. Praise God. Now, of course, you know from the tone of the letter that there were issues going on that Paul needed to address. See, several verses before this, we see him, him telling us concerning this issue. Concerning this issue. Now here, Paul is actually dealing with people who, who were challenging his apostleship. People who were, who were going about saying things concerning him. Now as a minister, this, those things are normal. Praise God. So you find people, you know, Paul told, Peter told us that in the last days, you know, false prophets will come as, even as they are false teachers. And you see, people will come to want to claim ownership of the brethren. You know, but, but you see, the truth is, Jesus, they all, we all belong to Jesus. That's the truth. Praise God. So, so you don't start dragging, this one is my member, this one, oh, sh thank you, Lord Jesus. Now he says, 
It says, my seal and apostleship is, is you are my seal and my apost of seal of my apostleship. Now verse 3 says, my answer to them that do examine me. Now you see, there were people who were examining him, asking questions, turning people's heart away from him. And there are people like that till this day. It says, have we not power to eat and drink? Have we not power to lead about a sister, a wife, as well as other apostles? And as the brethren of, of brethren of the Lord and Cephas, that's Peter, was he saying, don't we have right to get to marry? Now, we found out in chapter 7 that Paul wasn't married for whatever reason. Now, he's saying that even if I want to marry, is that a problem? Don't I have the right to? See, remember, he's answering people who were trying to examine him. Verse 6 says, Or I only and Barnabas, have, we not, have not we power to forbear walking? He says, Barnabas and I, if we choose not to do any other work again, don't we have the right? See, I want you to know something. He said, we have the right to do these things. Now, who goeth a warfare any time at his own charge? Who planted a vineyard and eateth not of the fruits thereof? Or who feedeth a flock and eateth not of the milk of the flock? Say I these things as a man, or saith not the law the same also? See, he is, you know, you, you see where exactly where he's going with this now. Let me just continue. This, for it is written, verse 9, for it is written in the law of Moses, Thou shalt not muzzle the mouth of the ox that treaded, the, treaded out the corn. Doth God take care of oxen? Or said he eat all together for our sakes? For our sakes, no doubt. This is written, that he that ploweth should plow in hope, and that he that treasured in hope should be partaker of his hope. If we have sown, verse 11 now, if we have sown unto you spiritual things, is it a great thing if we shall reap your carnal things? If others be partakers of this power over you, are not we rather? Nevertheless, we have not used this power, but suffer all things, lest we should hinder the gospel of Christ. Now you see where Paul was going to. There were people who were examining him, examining him for words. Now, you, you just get the idea straight that Paul had preached to these people. He had won them over to the Lord. They got saved because of his message. And, and, and they, they, he, you know, they, they stood, they, Paul was encouraged. He, he preached the gospel there and, and several of the disciples of Jesus Christ. Now Paul is saying that, look, there are people who are coming to examine me. Apparently, after Paul left, of course, pastors were raised from, their, from them and from others also. Now you have a situation where someone is now claiming I'm your pastor. So all your, you know, like today, all your seed offering, tithes, everything, give it to me. See, And Paul began to speak here. He said, oh, you guys are giving money to others and they are not giving to us. Now, not because, he, now you're going to see, see, say, say this. So he, be, he had to address this issue. See, he had to address it. Now, why, why is it important you address it? You see, because you want the people you have brought to the Lord, you want their faith to be firm. You don't want their faith to be shaky or to be, to be on the wrong foundation. So, so he had to address these things. Now, look at what he began to say. First of all, he says, we, you don't go to battle at your own charge. Meaning the one who sends you to battle will sponsor the battle. Now, this is what I tell all young ministers. Listen. Before you step out to say you're carrying the call of God on your life, you need to sit down and tell yourself the truth concerning this. Ask yourself this question. How do I trust God enough to meet my needs? If you don't, you will get into error in ministry. I assure you that. You will get into error. You will begin to do things that are unbecoming of the gospel of Christ. You will do it. And it just takes only once for you to do it and then you'll get into that flow. Praise <laughs> God. So, so Paul says, look, you don't go to battle at your own cost. No, you don't. And that's the truth. You don't do ministry at your cost. 
So you see, if you find someone says, oh, the reason I'm, I'm doing this job, I cannot resign from my job and do the ministry because actually in our church right now, I'm, I'm the one that is doing most of this from the salary I get from this job that I'm using. Now, do you know that is wrong? It's wrong spiritually, it's wrong. Why? The principle is what Paul said. You don't go to battle at your cost. If God has sent you, he will foot the bill. But, but I'm not seeing anything. Oh, I've been there. I've been there. Praise God. And, and the things the Lord taught me are the things that have kept me all this while. I'm telling you the truth. And I'm going to share some of that with you tomorrow. But let me show you something here. He says, he says in verse 11, if we have sown unto you spiritual things, is it a great thing if we shall reap your carnal things? See, first of all, he says, now Paul wouldn't say this if he's not sure of himself. He said, if we have sown, if we have sown unto you spiritual things, what's the spiritual things they sowed into their lives? They prayed for them. They, they gave them the word of the Lord. See, they did ministry where those people are concerned. So they taught them the things of the Lord, receiving things from the Spirit, see. Not every Bible teacher is giving you spiritual things. Now that's why it's important you first of all have to establish it that I am receiving spiritual blessings or I'm receiving spiritual goodness from this person. Praise God. So he says, if we have sown unto you. So are you receiving spiritual things from this person? You don't do, you don't assume where this is concerned. You know it as a truth. I am receiving spiritual things from this person. Praise God. So is it, if we have received spiritual, is it a great thing if we, if we shall reap your carnal things? Now it's, it's important Paul had to teach them these things. See, because they will be giving, but you see, they forget because, you know, for example, Paul is no more there with them. And they forget that, hey, maybe someone else, you know how it is, you know, a pastor has labored teaching the people and teaching the people and teaching the people. But you see, someone else comes and starts telling, hey, you all of you, you need to give for this, you need to give for this, bring money, bring money. Bring. And then they are happily bringing their money. And you hear the kind of things that they are doing. And, and Paul was like, what's going on there? I, I mean, somebody came and... Paul said, these guys, so they, they give like this. Now, the reason Paul was doing this, not because, you will see him say, not because he was looking for their money, but he just realized that, I mean, you guys are giving because people tell you to give. But you guys forget the principle of giving in it, itself. Because if you do give spiritually, then you would, you would know, because that's the, the way of the spirit. You will know that the ones, the people who have taught you, who have really fed you spiritually, they will partake of the things that you give. Now, that's one challenge the church is facing today. Lots of fleshly giving that is going on. A lot of it. Majority of the giving that is taking place in church, they are fleshly. They are not spiritual. What do I mean by that? Yeah, they are not ordered by the Lord. I ask the question, how many people truly listen to the Holy Spirit for them to sow a seed or for them to give their tithe or, or you, know, you know, for them to give? How many people? You, you, you that I'm talking to, you ask yourself that question. If you don't do that, then your giving is carnal. I need you to understand, your giving is carnal. And what's wrong in canal giving? You're going to cause, you're, cause, you're the one causing havoc in the church. So you see, so how are giving supposed to be? I'll tell you that tomorrow, praise God. Now, our time is up, but we're going to continue from this very point tomorrow. Praise God. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I bless you. Lord, I release these ones to go out today and bring forth fruits that will abound. Lord, I thank you because every yoke that is associated with their lives is hereby broken in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The yoke of sickness, the yoke of barrenness, every kind of yoke, 
Everything that have limited your life, I declare in the name of the Lord Jesus, this month of August, you are seeing a change. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. I'll see you tomorrow. Until then, bye-bye.